Lebanon and speak to Makara Moraba. He is the Assistant Professor of History with the American University of Beirut. Well, uh, thank you for being with us. I mean, one of, just I just want to get some some impression from you of how wide scale this was because one of the videos that our BBC Verified team has been looking at comes from inside the Bachman Hospital and you see injured and dead people in corridors and doorways, doctors squeezing past to treat them. So, I mean, we are talking about a, a, an attack that has is, that is affected hundreds and hundreds of people here. Well, uh, the amount or the massive scale of this attack has extended all across Lebanon, all the way into adjacent Syria. Anywhere that these pagers could actually be connected to this so-called Hezbollah network, they were the target of this attack. And while many of these injuries did happen in the southern suburbs of Beirut, where Hezbollah's stronghold is, Hezbollah had to go outside its, its own safety zone to dispatch many of these injured people to other hospitals, because this attack has proven, contrary to what Hezbollah claims, that its uh, so-called health care sector is not really uh, geared towards such a massive attack. Not to mention that many people had to go donate blood because certainly anyone who was in possession of this pager, which belongs to the 20th century, was targeted. And their injuries were, uh, were some of them were less fatal. But in general, many of these people uh, have been mutilated and many of them did lose their lives or even their limbs. Hmm. Uh, Makram, looking at Hezbollah's statement tonight, the group clearly considers this an escalation. What happens next is less clear. The one thing I would point out is that if you're going to take on the might of the Israeli Defence Forces, you need some means of communication. They can't use smartphones. They don't have pages. How do you do that with no communication? Well, sir, you're assuming that Hezbollah does, does want to take Israel on. The last year has confirmed what everyone in Lebanon knows, that Hezbollah or the Iranian proxy militias are not, are not there to really fight Israel, but rather to be a kind of a forward position to protect Iran's interests. So in a, in a manner, despite the fact that many people claim that Hezbollah has the technology to actually harm or destroy Israel, their use of these low tech and even their inability to use smart technology has proven that they are actually the consumers of technology, whereas Israel, at the end of the day, are the manufacturers of such intelligence and security apparatuses. If Hezbollah or Iran decide to use more sophisticated weapons, it's no longer a confrontation between Hezbollah and Israel, but rather a confrontation between the international community and NATO and the United States and Iran directly. Right. Are you therefore suggesting, if I'm reading right what you're saying there, is that, is that there are many people in Lebanon who will now question the purpose of taking on Israel in that international setting? Do you think psychologically people would say this is just a, it's a war that, that Lebanon and, and by obviously by default Hezbollah just cannot win? Well, it's not a fight that can't win. It's a fight that should not take place because Hezbollah and Nasrallah have claimed that this is a so-called war of support for the Palestinians and the people of Gaza. And as you see what has happened in Gaza, that the entirety of the so-called Iranian proxies did not really contribute positively in helping their uh, their fellow hmm. Palestinians. So at the end of the day, Hezbollah has proven that it's all talk and no play. And Hezbollah and Iran have lost has lost face in a way through the assassination of Haniya or what happened today, which is very much similar to a Hollywood movie, but it, trans it transcribed over the streets of Beirut. That's really interesting. Uh, Makram Baba, always good to talk to you. Thank you for coming.